Hi, it's Dux here. I'd like to show you what SharePoint 2010 looks like on an iPad. Here I've got uh, SharePoint 2010 on the iPad Safari and as you can see it renders the full version of SharePoint 2010. Unlike the iPhone or iPod Touch, it displays the SharePoint Mobile Edition. One of the quick things I notice here is when you pull up SharePoint 2010 and start zooming in and zooming out, for some reason, certain parts of the pages would disappear. But uh, if you tilt the iPad horizontally or vertically, the missing section will come back up. Something to do with the browser rendering. Next, what I'd like to show you on this site is uh, I want to show you the ribbon interface. So when I click on the page tab, I'm going to zoom in and kind of show you the ribbon interface. There you go. It renders nicely as if you were on a regular browser on your computer, be it Internet Explorer or other types of browsers. I went into the document library settings of the site assets library for the uh, where the home page is stored. There you go. And then um, next I want to show you the announcements list and I want to zoom in on the ratings capability. As you can see, I can click on the rating of a announcement item and it allows me to rate it. There you go. Next, I want to bring up the document library and in the document library, I want to zoom into this one specific file. It's a access file and I want to click the drop down menu of that uh, library item. And what I want to show you is I can check in this file that's been checked out. So I will go ahead and click on the check in button. And the cool thing is once I do that, let me zoom out. Through JavaScript, the check-in interface or dialog box shows up. I can click OK and I'm able to check in. So from that perspective, talk about cross-browser compatibility, JavaScript works. Now what I want to do next is go to the picture library. And as you can see in this picture library, it looks a bit different. For some reason, the default thumbnail view that we're used to when we use IE does not show up. But it still shows as a preview of the picture on the quick launch. Now I want to go back on to another list. This time it's a custom list called expense reimbursement. In this custom list, I, I, I enable the approval workflow and I want to look at the workflow history. And what I want to show you here, which is pretty interesting as well, is Visio Services is rendering just fine. So as you know, in SharePoint 2010, with the uh, workflows built in, uh, you can visualize the workflow through visual visual services. So what I'm trying to do here is zoom in and zoom out so we can see the uh, visualization nicely. But uh, that should be good enough. There you go. So now, yeah, let me move this a bit here. So as you can see, we can see the visual services rendering the workflow diagram. Um, just fine. So let me go back to the shared documents document library. Next thing I want to show you is Excel services. Oops, I don't know what I clicked on here, but let me go back. So uh, I want to zoom into this file called sales report. And as you can see, again, when I tilt the screen, there's issues on the page being rendered. So let me click on sales report. This has a .xlsx extension. And so you got stuck again. Let me try this one more time. Click on, oops, no, oh, disappeared. Go back, zoom out, one more time. Turn around. All right. Let's see if this touch works. There you go. So what I want to show you here is Excel services. So I'm rendering an Excel file through Excel services. Works just fine. I even defined some parameters in this uh, Excel file so we can uh, work with it from the browser through Excel services. So I clicked on another spreadsheet here. So it shows up just fine, beautiful. Now let me go back to my site, business development site. And next thing I wanna show you is forms services. So I have a uh, forms library here called travel request and I click on the ribbon interface because I want to fill in a new travel request. So let me click new document, new document and behind the scenes form services is rendering the form built with InfoPath and let me fill up this new travel request. Uh, this is for a trip to the SharePoint Evolutions conference coming up in London. 
Now, the cool thing about this, think about it. With iPad and SharePoint 2010 filling out forms, this will be a great application for the healthcare industry. So let's say if you're a doctor or a nurse filling out forms or any type of work or function that requires a lot of form filling, like going around, getting surveys in the construction industry, this is really, really powerful. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm still filling out the forms, um, clicking on the selections of the kind of rental car I get full size and let me click on the type of flight I'm gonna fly economy and also I'm going to tilt the screen around so I can pick the the seat preference I have which is an aisle seat okay so let me hit save and once I hit save the save dialog box would show up it's gonna ask me to enter in the name or the file name of this form so let me just type DSY, that's my first initial and then last name. Let me hit save. So after I do that, let me hit, uh, go ahead and hit back. So I can go back to my form library or travel request form library. And I wanna make sure is if that uh, travel request made in. There you go, DSY, cool. So again, great application. If you're mobile and uh, you need to fill out forms, again, I can think of doctors and nurses. Next, I wanna to go to the more options or the create page. What's different about this is since Silverlight is not installed, we don't see the Silverlight interface allowing us to create new forms or new, not new forms, but new libraries, new lists and whatnot. So it told me to install Silverlight, so I clicked on that and the download link for Safari, I clicked on, it says you can install it. So I guess same goes with Flash, right? But nevertheless, it's not a showstopper. I can still create new lists or library. Let me create a new project task list. And for all of you that don't know this, project task list um, has a major upgrade in SharePoint 2010. Very, very um, nice, visually useful because uh, full Gantt chart, dependencies, you could see it. So I'm just defining the properties of this project task list. Let me hit create. And once I do that, it's uh, creating the project task list for me. So uh, let's see, there you go. It's still taking a few seconds rendering the actual view. Oh, there we have it. So project task list created in SharePoint 2010 using an iPad. Another cool thing with 2010, for those of you that don't know this, is the navigational aspect of it. Talk about usability. So I'm gonna click on this, uh, I forgot what this is called, but I can look at um, where I'm at and I can go back to the home page of my site easily. Now another capability, right? not capability, but I think another use of an iPad is for reporting. Imagine if you need to report to your executives or, or high level folks, instead of lugging around laptop, bring an iPad. What I'm showing you here is a project we worked on, DC Department of Transportation, just showing project status of uh, federal stimulus projects. But we can see all the visualizations, dashboards, uh, information quickly. So imagine if you're in a status meeting or some kind of briefing, carrying around an iPad versus um, bring, lugging around your laptop or, or hooking up to a projector, especially if it's something informal, would be quite convenient. And as you can see, the iPad is quite fast and responsive. And uh, in this, uh, uh, scenario is working fine and by the way this um, application or this solution was built on top of the prior version of SharePoint so let me go back to uh, SharePoint 2010 it's still loading here let me go back to uh, my SharePoint 2010 site there you go and um, hopefully this demonstration was uh, beneficial for you gave you some insights on what you can do with SharePoint 2010 and an iPad thanks again and have a great one